Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you live through it. Honor your path, trust your journey, learn, grow, evolve, become. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody, to choose to be here tonight. I know it's cold and rain outside, so I think everybody's brave to be here. And I will talk about self-forgiveness. And I can never say enough how I'm grateful for the spiritism, for this beautiful doctrine that has transformed me, that has changed me, and have given me so, so much. And when you first come to the Spiritist Center, we are curious about the, no, the, the, the doctrine, no, when, especially when you have not born into the doctrine. And one advice that I always I tell anyone when they ask me about this doctrine is to let the spirit get into you. You know, you have to put your guard down and let the spirit come through you. Study, reading, go to lectures, go to the classes, talk to people, talk to your friends, that your new friends you make, you know, in the house. Allow the spiritism walking through you. And that's how we can not only evolve ourselves, it's not only how we can um, learn to forgive ourselves, for instance, forgive others, and many other things, and many other good things. But the most important, the doctrine also teach me to honor my path, my past, because that was the purpose to teach me something. But these understands, I, I don't have, I don't have that fully understand of that until I allow myself. And not only that, but I allow the doctrine to teach me that. So, when we talk about self-forgiveness, it's something very hard sometimes for a lot of people. And we learn that we have also to forgive others, right? But we cannot give what you don't have. So how you can forgive others if you, you cannot forgive yourself? So we need to learn to forgive ourselves first so you can forgive others eventually. But we are people like, no, we are normal people like everybody else. We have mistakes, we have a difficult to, to sometimes forgive ourselves, but we are not perfect. So in the sense, we are human beings. Like, you know, we, we are like um, there to make mistakes and learn from there. We are not perfect, nobody is. And I bring the Jesus and the apostles as a parameters for us to understand that we are not perfect and that's okay not to be perfect. And the most important thing is what we can learn from mistakes and take from that. So why I like to use the apostles as an example, because Jesus asked Mary sinners to do great things in his name. So think about if the apostles um, were like a flawless people, we, the normal people, you probably will give up on the first uh, mistake that we you know, have done. You don't even want to try to learn from the mistakes or make ourselves better. So if the Jesus have chosen flawless apostles to follow him, we will probably feel, we we're going to feel like very intimidated. So that's what, that's what I think is a great example and parameter for us to see the, um, the apostles, like despite of their strong star, they display lack of a comprehension, little faith, hard hearts, competitiveness, possessiveness, selfish ambition, jealous. Very similar characteristics that 
we know that we have or at one point or other, you have a felt at one point or other, right? So again, keep in mind that we cannot give to others what you don't have to yourself. So it's a journey, it's a process. And I like to display here some examples, very strong examples that we can f now feel familiar with the parameter that I bring in you know, on the apostles, which is uh, when Jesus, Jesus was arrested, all the apostles left him and fled. And they were nowhere to be found during his trial, torture, crucifixion. And the apostles were no way ready and what to be evangelized about, you know, but there's, the call was, no, Jesus called them to be evangelized. So is Jesus just asking sinners to serve him? And after uh, the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the 11 and commissioned them to be his evangelized. Now he said, go in the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every living creature. So these people, they make you know, the history, they make uh, the time, you know, they follow Jesus and they become his, you know, proclaim his name and uh, share the gospel to everywhere that we still live in nowadays. They have a fault, right? Um, however, when the descent of the Holy Spirit and the infusion of the divine grace transformed the apostles from fearful to courageous. So it's a process. I just want you guys to follow why I have bringing this as an example. It's about the transformation. It's about you don't have to be stuck in what you used to do or used to be. So from timid to assertive, hesitant to confident, reserved to bold. So after Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, the one who had a cover and behind locked doors, he stood being for the crowds bravely and loudly proclaiming Jesus, right? And Jesus calls the unworthy and make them worth. He sent forth the weak and make them strong. And the apostles obey. They went forth and preached to everywhere. So this, when I was doing this study, um, what are the most thing they stick out to me is how uh, Peter, like, you know, when before, you know, they took Jesus away, he say, you know, oh, I'll never deny you, but he ended up denied Jesus three times, right? You know, if you recall that on the Bible. So Peter, um, he could be permanent, frustrated you know, with himself because he denied Jesus, even though he said he wouldn't do it. But sometimes after Jesus' death, Peter was revived and I overlooked you know, the mistake he become one of the leading preachers. Now he went, he's the one that make the gospel. He was the one that he make, now he's been known for share the gospel, right? Um, and on the other hand, you have a Judas, which, you know, he delivered Jesus to those who want to kill Jesus. Well, to this day, you know, the reason that uh, Judas uh, did so is still now being in discussion. Um, the opinions are that Judas hoped that Jesus being arrested would provoke a reaction from the you know, people against the Romans who dominated the region of the Jews at the time. But when Judas realized you now that Jesus was not the revolutionary that he thought he was, uh, he would have uh, he could have forgiven himself and turned his pain into the work like Peter did. And of course, um, the other apostles would have forgiven him because that's what the Jesus teach, you know, to forgive seven times seven, seven, so uh, seven, seven times seven, right? That was the lesson. So his friends would have forgiven him for sure, but instead he could not bear the pain and well, he gave up and uh, he ended up his own life. So. No matter how big the mistake you have made, you need to forgive yourself and allow yourself to start over. Uh, the bottom line here was uh, Judas missed the opportunity to redeem himself by working for the benefit to the others. Peter, on the contrary, he re are remembered for his work in the gospel, not for his mistakes. So both made mistakes, one chose 
a different approach to his mistake. The other one chose to don't face the mistake and adjust and his life. And the gospel says that when God forgives us, I will never remember your sins. Well, this reminds me of something that uh, have, uh, recently happened to me. I think everyone has uh, someone in their life that um, they like to throw things in their face. Like I say, we are not perfect. We have uh, all made mistakes. Um, you know, it can be a family member, a friend, I mean, a friend, ex-wife, ex-husband. Those people, they love to throw things in your face. They love to remember you, whoa, who you think you are. Um, you have done such and such and such a thing. And try to make you feel guilty about yourself. They try to make you feel, you know, less of yourself. And you need, an, no, an analyze when someone they do this to us and know better not to let this person intimidate you. Because if you have made the decision to work on yourself, to forgive yourself, and if this is something that you already know that you are no, acknowledge the mistake you have done and then you work on that and you're okay for that, don't let nobody intimidate you or make you feel shame of what you have done. Don't. And of course, I know nobody here, they are the other person, they make people feel the way. I know everybody here don't do things like that, right? <laughs> so, well, when our former guilt comes to mind, we can choose to remain stuck in the past, or we can choose to fill our minds with thoughts about the incredible God, who has forgiven us, and thank Him and praise Him. Well, we cannot turn back time. You can't. Whatever has been done, whatever was done, was done. And I'm telling you, you guys, one thing, um, the energy that we spend on the pain of our mistakes, which in reality uh, is a self-pity, must be redirected toward goodness, something constructive and useful. We exist, we exist to build happiness and goodness, not to waste time mourning and weeping about things you have done. I, I can assert to you guys one thing. It's possible to forgive yourself no matter what the situation is, no matter what you have done, no matter what people tell you or try to throw in your face or make you feel ashamed it's possible it's a very simple um, techniques that we can apply but uh, before any techniques before anything you gotta believe in ourselves that Jesus are with us he laid now the lessons for us but we have a God that create us God make us to be happy. God make us to be loved and to love. Nothing else. Nothing else. So, to the girl I was then, I forgive you. So, this is some piece of the therapy that I have done and I will share with you guys because when I did, I, when I did the therapy, this is before I have uh, the spiritism as my first most uh, guidance. Uh, one of those points that was raised uh, by my, my psychologist was um, the self-forgiveness. And even before forgive anyone else or situation, the important thing was to forgive me. So it is very interesting how the science, aside of the doctrine, 
that was the same thing. They always push us towards to the same direction. It's about us to make the call. It's about us to choose. Like I use the parameters from now from the apostles. One chose just to not face his mistakes. The other one chose to face his mistakes and nobody talk about his mistake or he was be. He just talk about the great things he ever done. Um, so write yourself an apology, including how you offer remorse to others and how you plan to make amends. Ask yourself what you do different next time. And then if you like, read what you have written out loud. Be comfortable say you disappointed yourself, but find a strain, no, this one error does define you, learning from your mistakes. It's all about you learning from mistakes. That's um, the whole purpose, I believe, why we have the free will to, you know, to make those mistakes and to learn from them. So, yes, I have done that. I have wrote letters to myself. I have uh, given myself a deep thought about those uh, mistakes I have done in the past. And, well, I can say I'm a healing from. Um, that's why I want to invite everybody to let's do a little meditation together right now. I mean, you can choose to close your eyes if you want to do, if it's going to help you to drill down your brain, or you don't have to, but I want to invite you guys to together remember some point in your life that you felt guilt or shame. Give yourself, you know, a little time to think about what is that one thing that still bother you? What is this one thing that you still uh, weep yourself about? Because all those questions have a lesson behind them and can be a teachable moment. So once you identify what is one thing that you still you know, let it bother you, remember the moment of your act and wonder why you did it. When I have done this exercise with myself, uh, at that point, the only answer that I had was that I did the things I did because I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was doing the best for me and for others. I did not intend to do anything I would regret. That's that simple. That's that simple. So, some key takeaway from this exercise, and as something that I, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a coach, I'm just share my learnings with you guys because I don't feel that I should keep it to myself but I have helped me and benefit me so I feel grateful that I'm able to share and hopefully help you guys also to work on these issues if you know if it's some but the key takeaway was when you ask those questions to yourself when you ask those questions and you reflect on them, is to decide if, if you have a grow from the mistakes, if you have a learn from it, if you are ready to look yourself in the mirror and own up your mess ups, have you acknowledged and dealt with their underlying issues, or you just did it like Judas, you know, you can choose, you can be Judas or can be Peter with your mistakes. Are you willing to let God work inside out of you? Are you willing to seek professional help if necessary? Which I highly recommend. Of course, you have great people here that always are teachers in our classes and we have lecturers, you have everything else. It's very important, but also sometimes you need extra push-up help. So. Why not? 
So those are the questions that we have to ask ourselves when you face some thing that bothers from the exercise that I previously um, shared with you guys. So if you say yes to any of those questions, please do yourself a favor and forgive yourself. It is all on you. Nobody else can do that for you but yourself. And of course, I will close this lecture again with the Craig uh, quote, forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you live through it, honor your path, trust your journey, learn, grow, evolve, and become. Thank you very much, everybody, to be here tonight. It's all I have to say tonight. Thank you.